Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Tuesday, May 19, 2015 meeting of the Adana City Council and the Adana Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Roll call, please. Here. Member Stoughton. Here. Member Stewart. Here. Member Swenson. Here. Mayor Hovland. Here. Uh, we've got a form of meeting agenda in front of us this evening. Is there a motion to adopt the form of meeting agenda? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second to adopt the meeting agenda. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. And uh, we next have the consent agenda. There are 16 items on the consent agenda. Is there anyone on the council that wishes to remove an item from the consent agenda? Member Staunton. Uh, need to remove item O, zoning ordinance amendments. All right. Anything else? All right. Is there a motion I'll to move. approve the balance of the consent agenda, A through P, with the exception of O? Moved second. by Member Swenson, second by Member Stewart. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion as stated say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. And now we are going to 4 0 Member Staunton, which is a uh, second reading on uh, uh, amending the zoning ordinance. Is that what we have on the dais? Yes. That has a correction in yes. it? Yes. Thank you, um, Member Swenson and, and Mr. Mayor. Um, I had just earlier today suggested an additional change to the definition of window well that changes it to say that it means the space maintained around a below grade window and the surrounding soil. And staff has already made that change and I just wanted to make sure that that was reflected in the consent agenda. Good, thank you. I see that in the revised uh, version of it on page three. So thanks for catching that. Any questions so on that or? So I would move this item. All right. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second uh, to um, approve item 4-0, we pulled this out in isolation and it, uh, well it's second reading but it's not a waiver of second reading. So uh, all those in favor of the uh, of the amended ordinance 2015-07 as uh, amended by Member Staunton say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. All right. Yes, Member I just, Brindle. I have a comment about 4N, which we did not take off of consent agenda, but it has to do with the Blake Road corridor study as it relates to access for Edina residents to the Southwest Corridor light rail that will be built. And when it is built, uh, the enhancements along Blake Road uh, will help Edina residents get safely to the station, which will be on the opposite side of Excelsior Boulevard. So that's what that particular item was, and it's important to us as a city that we have safe access to transit. Good. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to the um, special recognitions and presentations portion of the agenda this evening. And the first matter in front of us in that portion of the agenda is a proclamation. Uh, emergency, emergency Medical Services Week, and we've got uh, our very uh, capable crew here with us this evening, at least some of them. Apparently not too many emergencies in town this evening. Um, so the proclamation for EMS Week, uh, May 17th through the 23rd, 2015, reads as follows. Emergency, whereas emergency medical services are a vital public service, and whereas emergency medical services teams of the Edina Fire and Police Departments are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival rate and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas the emergency medical services system consists of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, and others. And whereas emergency medical services providers have traditionally served as the safety net of America's healthcare system. And whereas emergency medical services responders of the Atlanta Fire and Police Departments engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. And whereas the citizens of the city of Atlanta benefit daily from the knowledge and skills of these highly trained individuals. And whereas injury prevention and the appropriate use of the emergency medical services system will help reduce health care costs. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of the Edina police and emergency and fire, uh, Edina fire emergency medical personnel who serve to protect us. And whereas with the theme EMS strong, the community is encouraged to observe this week 
recognizing the service uh, received from emergency medical services personnel. Now therefore be it resolved that we, the City Council of the City of Edina, do hereby proclaim the week of May 17th to the 23rd, 2015, as Emergency Medical Services Week in the City of Edina in honor and recognition of the valuable contributions made by the Edina Emergency Medical Services providers to the health and well-being of our citizens. Is there a motion to adopt the proclamation? So moved. Second. We had a motion and a second to adopt the proclamation and uh, characterize Emergency Medical Services Week as May 17th to the 23rd, 2015. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. And is there someone, Chief, you want to come forward? And accept the proclamation. I think I've got a couple of them here. I'll bring them down to you. And then I'll let you right make your remarks. These are important remarks to be made for wonderful people that are serving our city that are also coming forward. Thank you. The picture is in the picture. Yeah, oh, you want to just pull it for now? Okay, if you would. All right, let's pull out up here in the front. Because he said they weren't busy. That's one thing we don't say anything. <laughs> Jinxed it. Mayor Holden, Council, thank you very much for recognizing EMS Week. We're very proud of the system that we have here in Edina. I think it's exceptional. It's probably one of the top systems in the state, if not the country. We have a, a very unique system in that the moment a resident calls to ask for help, our dispatchers are trained in emergency medical dispatching. They begin triaging the call, determining the severity of it, and if need be, they begin that patient care right on the phone giving them pre-arrival instructions. Not all systems provide that level of service. And then our police officers are immediately dispatched along with our fire department. Our police officers, all patrol cars carry EEDs. Um, that means they get to the scene quickly and they can provide that most life-saving procedure of electrical defibrillation very quickly. And then our EMS system, our firefighters and paramedics, uh, they're in route um, with an average response time of just over four minutes in the city, which is way above the rest of the system in the metropolitan area. Um, our paramedics, they provide a level of service that I think is very unique in that uh, we're always on the cutting edge. We're doing procedures that are not being done in other parts of this state and other parts of this country. Um, our paramedics do uh, pre-hospital ultrasounds, um, which there is no other system in the country that's doing pre-hospital ultrasounds. That helps us determine the severity of, of a patient's condition, and then we can transport them to the appropriate facility. Last year, our EMS system responded to over 3,900 medical calls, trauma calls, 24 hours a day. So we're very proud of our, our men and women, and uh, we look forward to serving uh, you guys again this year. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Member Brindle, you had a comment, and I have one as well. So I do. Um, we have a neighbor who is had need of EMS services multiple times in, uh, in the recent past and ran into uh, to the neighbor the other day and he just, he was so appreciative and just the expert service given to his wife when, uh, when needed. So thank you very much. Chief, I think uh, this study was done a few years ago now, but when, when I talk about it with uh, audiences that are gathered 
uh, that study from the Center for Disease Control that looked around the country at, uh, at what communities have the highest cardiac save rate. And, and Edina was number one. Hennepin County was number one from a county standpoint. We had twice the save rate of uh, Hennepin County. It, it's extraordinary. And people are very proud. It, it always generates a great deal of applause. So you, you don't hear that from people that uh, you're not with uh, at, a, at a gathering, a noon luncheon, or an evening banquet. Uh, but they have enormous pride in all of you uh, in the work that you do, and enormous confidence, and they feel safe here. This is a place that they know they can get the kind of help they need when they need it. And to know, uh, on top of everything else, uh, that we have the highest cardiac save rate in the country is just astounding, and I'm sure that that continues to this day. So congratulations to all of you. Thanks for serving us so well and protecting us uh, from a health standpoint. It's, 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 it's critical work, and we greatly appreciate it. So thank you. Manager Neal. Yeah, just I, I think one final thing I, I would like to note for you is the presence of, of all of our emergency service providers tonight as part of this as part of this recognition. You have police officers here, you have dispatchers here, and as Chief Schmitz indicated, we have we have a great deal of control of the call from, from beginning to end. Uh, but it's also important for you to know and for, for our residents to know. Uh, how closely all of those different uh, entities from dispatch to fire to police work together as a team. And the fact that they're all here tonight uh, gives you a good indication of that. But uh, that, that's, that teamwork that they exhibit saves lives every day in Edina. It's important to, it's important mm -hmm. to recognize that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks again. All right. Uh, next, uh, Jordan Gilgenbach, our communications coordinator, is going to... Uh, Give us a Speak Up Edina report on city taglines. Good evening, Mayor Hovland and members of the City Council. Uh, like the Mayor mentioned, my name is Jordan Gilgenbeck. I'm a communications coordinator here for the city, and I'm presenting tonight on the April discussion on Speak Up Edina. Um, as you're aware, Speak Up Edina is our civic engagement site that we have had since uh, June 2012. Um, and we've been, in the last year and a half, we've been holding monthly discussions on various topics, uh, just gathering community feedback as part of the City Council's uh, six strategic priorities for 2014-15. Um, in the April discussion, we focused on what city, uh, on city taglines. Uh, things, we asked things such as, uh, should Edina have an official tagline? We currently adapt part of our, of our strategic mission uh, for living, learning, raising families, and doing business as more of an unofficial tagline. Um, but should we have an official one, why or why not? If anybody had any suggestions, and what sort of community characteristics should be incorporated if one were to be created? The discussion was open from April 1st to May 1st. We received 18 comments. The site received 675 visitors from, from, uh, from 881 total visits, but just shy of 4,000 total page views, and all of the respondents on this discussion were from Edina. Uh, it was a quiet discussion this month. Um, it signifies that either there's not a lot of interest in it or not a lot of need from it from the community. Um, a few of the comments that did stand out, um, a tagline is helpful uh, that it's memorable, as long as it's memorable and says something distinctive about the city, and it should be short, definitely short. The, long, the longer, the more confusing it can be. Um, Several comments came through that this isn't a priority, that we should be focusing on other things, um, such as event promotion or infrastructure. Um, but the taglines are still part of how the city brands itself. And that when cities do have taglines, they often sound the same as other cities, and they are often quickly dated. Um, that is about what we received for this month. Uh, for the current month, for May, we're taking uh, comments on... Um, Thank you. Commercial centers in the city um, asking uh, what people think about their, their local commercial centers, um, what could be improved, what they like about them, et cetera. With that, I will stand for any questions you might yeah. have on the April discussion. Questions for Jordan about this month's topic. All right. Nope. Very good. Thank you for Thank the you. update. We've got one public hearing this evening. And it uh, is a proposed improvement uh, 
for the Trunk Highway 100 noise wall on the west side of Highway 100 from the Minnehaha Creek up around almost, I guess almost to the railroad bridge behind uh, Holiday Gas Station on Vernon. And Director Milner has this matter. Mayor, members of the council, thank you. Um, yeah, the public improvement hearing for improvement number SA-17, the noise walls improvement. West side of Highway 100, here's a photo of the project location. So the west side of 100 from Minnehaha Creek, uh, fronting the exit ramp of Highway 100 up to Vernon Avenue, that is all MnDOT right away, uh, up to the uh, CP rail uh, location, and then the, uh, the rail borders the west segment of the project. So this project, uh, if you recall, we've talked about re uh, sound walls in the past, and there's this infamous list of MnDOT. That started in 1995 by a legislative uh, request to study all the uh, metro areas for state and federal noise standards, where they're exceeded. So there was this list of 300 and some locations for noise walls. In 2004, um, this was considered as part of the Highway 100 noise walls um, north of Minnehaha Creek in St. Louis Park. In 2006, we received a petition from residents to consider this wall again. In 2008, it was moved up to number 25 on that priority list. In 2008, there was a, a survey done and there was split results whether or not the project should go forward at the time. 2011, there was another petition received from residents. There was an informational meeting in 2012. And then in 2013, it moved to number five on MnDOT's priority list. And then this year, we got a call from MnDOT saying they'd like to add it to their 2016 construction schedule. And when we got the call, that means the funding changed from all the previous iterations where it was 100% assessed to a different funding source that we'll discuss here in a little bit. But we had an informational meeting with the residents uh, in this room in March, and then we're here tonight for the public improvement hearing. So this photo is a photo of looking on the, uh, this, the exit ramp off of 100 down in Edenbrook. You can see it's about five to seven feet above the uh, residential local street, and there's no buffer at all with the highway noise and visual uh, along that location. So they're proposing a 20-foot wall in this location. As it goes up the ramp, it'll reduce in height down to six foot. It'll be a similar wall than, that is what, similar to the wall that's located north of Minnehaha Creek. Uh, it will be in uh, Highway 100 MnDOT right away, and it'll be designed and administered by MnDOT. So we did go out for resident input. There is 57 properties within the project area. 13 have voiced support for the project, and we haven't heard any feedback against the project. The, the funding, like I said, changed when, they're, when they finally got up to that priority list and they consider it part of their program. So it's on considering MnDOT's noise wall policy, 90% of that project is funded by MnDOT. 10% is needs to be locally funded. And the local part we're proposing is being special assessed to the benefiting properties adjacent to this construction project. So the total cost is just under a million dollars. And when we break out the uh, cost, we did it in a tiered system based on the benefits to the residents. So the, the adjacent properties right to the highway with the greatest benefit would be a $3,000 REU assessment. So that's a residential equivalent unit, which is typically one single family home. The second tier would be $2,000 per REU, and the third tier would be $1,000 per REU, and that's the yellow is the third tier, and the blue is first tier. The middle uh, pink, purple color is that second tier range. The assessment hearing we would conduct it similar to our street reconstruction projects one year after construction. They would like to construct this in the uh, late summer, early fall of 2016, so we'd have this assessment hearing in the fall of 2017. Assessments are payable over 15 years. Uh, with the various pavement options that are found on our website. We can pay the entire amount upon re receiving the bill. You can do a partial payment, or you can uh, roll the entire amount onto your property tax statement. And there's also considerations for age and income limits for de deferral. So we believe this project is necessary, cost-effective, and feasible. We're recommending authorizing the noise wall improvements, SA-17, and I'll stand for questions at this time. Question, questions for Director Milner? Member Stewart. Director Milner, uh, when you say 13 residents have voiced support, you did not go out and survey all the uh, residents. These are people who just wrote us emails or otherwise said, please uh, erect the wall. 
Correct. Since that neighborhood meeting went out in February for the March meeting, I've either received phone calls or emails in support of it. We also had people in here. Um, you can see some of the email correspondence in your packet. Also, the sign-in sheet for the meeting. I believe we had six to eight different properties, and no one at that time voiced uh, against the project. Right. And then um, the 10% uh, of the cost is local, so 90% is really being picked up by MnDOT, right? Correct. So um, uh, I think it's important that people understand that, that uh, it is a tremendous benefit for uh, the community and the, um, uh, the last thing there are some uh, changes that are quite possible with respect to the exit and entrance ramps at Vernon Avenue and 50th Street on and off of Highway 100 uh, but the wall uh, and I, I know the answer to this because I've already asked the question but the wall uh, is not going to impact any of those changes or, or there's no need to move the wall after you put it up because of the uh, possible uh, pending changes. Yep, and I think that's the key word, the possible changes at this time. We don't know right. what reconfigured would look like, but MnDOT is putting it up, they own it, and right. if there's reconfigured, they'll have to re-look at the implementation of this wall. Right, thank you. Thank you. Member Staunton. Um, I just wanted on this uh, particular slide, looking at the, the length, it looks like it starts down at the creek and extends up the entrance ramp and then curls around onto Vernon and if I'm reading it correctly, goes as far as the basically the railroad right of way. Correct, MnDOT's right of way goes right up to that point, and then the county takes over in the railroad right of ways. Okay, so the question that I have is, I know that we have previously approved a redevelopment project for, I think it's 5125, 5115, and 5107 um, for a multi-unit PUD project that actually fronts right on Vernon there. And this may be a question for Director Teague. I, I just want to make sure we're not doing something inconsistent with that approval, and I wonder if you could just address that issue. Uh, certainly, uh, Member Staunton, members of the council. That project was approved back in 2013, and the developer has since walked away from the project. Uh, they needed to sell a certain amount of units before they were to build any and they were unable to sell any. The actual site plan approval expires this August. Should there be any future development of those three sites, um, they would have to come back and go through the process. At that time, we could consider removing part of that wall to try to engage the street, which was uh, part of the purpose of that approved plan to connect these parcels with the Grandview area. So, and I assume, um, either for you, Director Teeger, for Director Milner. Um, this is the kind of thing, it's the MnDOT right away, so we'd just have to work with them, or the applicant would have to work with them to figure out how we might access and modify what that wall would be like at, the, at that time. I got that correct? Correct. Um, I know that there are some changes, as Council Member Stewart noted, um, potentially to that Highway 100 um, exit ramp consistent with our Grandview framework and the plans that we were just talking about at our work session this evening. But it does seem to me that what we've contemplated certainly would bring the exit ramp closer to the Highway 100 um, traffic lanes that exist now and not further into the neighborhood. And so it wouldn't necessarily change how that wall would have to be configured. But I, I think as you note, you know, that's something that would be up to them and, and it would be part of that. And, I guess I'm not um, inclined to uh, to try to modify this based on possibilities in the future. If I'm, if you, you know, you're, if you're telling me that we can approach MnDOT at that time and and offer or ask for modifications. Correct. I think anything's on the table when we start uh, modifying exit ramps on and off their facilities, considering they own that's their right away. So anything we do, we would be in discussion with them on the best location if that wall needs to move or can it stay in the same place and we really don't know that until we see new configurations and a new project right. so I think we need to take advantage of the funding while we have it and, and these folks have been voicing the concern you saw from the timeline for over 10 years 
to get a wall in this location. So yeah, believe me, I don't want to get in the way of that. <laughs> uh, I've yeah. heard nothing but positive <laughs> support for it, and and regret that it didn't happen earlier. And and I think people are feeling good about the fact that it, not only is it happening now, but in a much more um, favorable financial framework. Yeah, just for one reference, I met uh, the two property owners north of Minnehaha Creek. Uh, these two folks right here had some flooding last summer, and we just, me and Director of Public Works, Brian Olson, met with them last week. And uh, I happened to mention the public hearing tonight about the wall, and they said, you know, we got the wall 10 years ago, but the benefit really wasn't there because a lot of the noise can come from this missing segment in there. So I had, I had tried to recruit them to come and, and give their opinion tonight, but I don't see them in the audience. Thank you. Other questions for Director Milner at this point in time? All right, stand by, please. Uh, this is a public hearing. I'm now going to open it up for this matter up for public testimony. So if there is anyone who wishes to come forward and, and uh, comment regarding this uh, proposed project, certainly feel free to do so. You'll have three minutes, as you were told, before the meeting starts. And uh, you'll get a green light. And then when you've got 30 seconds left, there'll be a little... Uh, amber or uh, light that comes on that gives you a forewarning that you've got uh, 30 seconds to kind of wrap up. So feel free to come forward if you so desire. Welcome to Council is eager to hear your comments. Good evening. Hi. Is it green? And your name and address, please. <laughs> Okay, um, my name is Jill Scullard. I'm at 4801 Westbrook Lane. So one of the ones in the tier one, I believe, and I'm here to represent my household in support of the project. Thank you. All right, very good, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'll move that we close the public hearing. It's been moved and seconded that we close the public hearing. Discussion, all those in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Carried. Do we have a motion regarding this matter? So moved. Second. second. We've got a motion and a second to uh, approve the uh, proposed improvement, the Trunk Highway 100 noise wall improvement. It's embodied in improvement SA-17. Uh, any further uh, questions or comments by council members? No. Happy to have it. <laughs> Member Stoughton? You yeah, I've said easy. enough. No, I, I think uh, right. I think it's terrific. I've heard nothing but positive and supportive uh, comments from the members of the public that I've talked to. So I'm All pleased right. to be able to vote in favor of it. Member Brindle, I'm happy that somebody in Edina is getting a noise wall. <laughs> <laughs> I live near Valley View and 169, and our project has been in the top 20, and it just sort of languishes there. So I don't know if it'll ever get done, but. But I, I shouldn't say it that way. My neighbors will not be pleased. Uh, but we are anxiously awaiting some sort of mitigation in that part of the city as well. I, uh, personally, I think this is just terrific news. There was a point in time when I lived across the highway uh, on Sunnyside, and uh, I remember uh, the effort we went through then, and, and, and it was close to happening on the west side as well. But this is quite a nice uh, financing opportunity here where the MnDOT's going to pick up 90% of it. I think before they were only going to pick up about 25%. So um, I, I think it's something long overdue. I'm very, very happy for all of you in that neighborhood. I think it's just terrific. So uh, all those in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Carried. I guess I should have waited to make those comments until after the vote was taken. But nonetheless, <laughs> all right. All right, community comment. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the council this evening on a matter that's not otherwise on our agenda? All right, seeing no one coming forward, we'll move on to the reports and recommendations portion of the agenda. And the first matter there is uh, our Vision Edina Strategic Vision and Framework Report. Uh, we've been asked to approve something that we've been working on for quite some time, and uh, Assistant Manager Karen Kurt has this. Oh, she, yeah. I'm sad too. I think she's been really good. 
be mayor, council. Um, I'm here to give a quick update on vision, the Vision of Dinah project. And as you are all well aware at this point, this has been a broad-based uh, community visioning process, really looking long-term out 20, 25 years into the future. Uh, when this is done, it will replace our current Edina Vision 2020. And it will serve as the, really the foundation for our comprehensive plan, uh, which we will probably embark on updating in, a, in the next year or so, and our capital improvement plans. Uh, this has been a, a very long process. It started uh, back in August of last year. Uh, we partnered with an organization called Future IQ, and they really started by researching city trends and implications um, and created a community profile and benchmark analysis for us. Um, in September of uh, 2014, we had 110 uh, community residents and stakeholders gather for a workshop where they identified drivers and then from those key drivers for our future developed uh, four plausible future scenarios. Uh, we then took those four plausible future scenarios, uh, Future IQ had developed a survey, and we held 37 community meetings and we had over 591 uh, people complete our Vision of Dinah survey. And uh, then that really became the foundation then for the strategic vision and framework. Um, and then our last step was an open house that we held on April 14th. Uh, all of this work has been really well documented by our consultant team and can be found on our website um, if you uh, look at uh, adinamn.gov backslash vision. And so then just a little bit again about the process. When the think tank originally met, they really were looking at drivers for the future, and you can see some of those highlighted here, but really placing a special emphasis on those drivers that were both uncertain and highly important. And then those drivers became the foundation of the, the four plausible future scenarios. And for uh, our community, those scenarios were organized around um, a horizontal access that was balancing Adina's redevelopment and a vertical access uh, that had to do with uh, community fabric and character. And I'm just going to quickly go to the website just because there might be some... Uh, data lovers out there that might have some interest in uh, how you can actually see this data. And so this is the Vision of Dinah section of our website. And you can see on the uh, right-hand side there all of the reports that I mentioned earlier. Um, but as you scroll down, uh, you can also see, it's a little slow here, a button that talks about uh, data visualization. And if you click on this, you can find all of the questions that we asked in the survey, and you can also then sort those questions uh, by key demographic characteristics. So in this case, the question has to do with uh, residential redevelopment. You could sort that by age to see how the responses might change, uh, by gender, region of the city, or the length of time that the individual has lived in the city. So I wanted uh, folks uh, that might be listening to the audience to be aware uh, that all of that data is out there, and there's a lot of useful information in there. Uh, so with respect then to the actual visioning document itself, we reworked the city's vision statement. Uh, it now reads that Edina holds a well-earned reputation as a city of choice. It is the model of a successful, mature, and progressive urban community. We maintain our heritage and attractiveness and afford our residents the highest quality of life while actively embracing the future. Uh, the features that define our community include inclusive and connected, built-to-scale environment, sustainable environment, a community of learning, and future-oriented. And there's a lot more definition that goes with each of those that you can find in the report itself. And in addition, there are strategic fo focus areas that are, again, outlined in more detail, and I won't go into them tonight. But they include residential redevelopment mix, commercial redevelopment mix, transportation options, environmental stewardship, live and work, educational focus, population mix, and regional leadership. And so the action that we're requesting is for final approval of the Vision of Dinah strategic vision and framework. 
And we, uh, since the work session that we had a few weeks ago on this, um, we've added the edits that were suggested by the council. Uh, we also added some additional edits uh, that were proposed by the mayor at the, uh, at the council's direction to the regional leadership section. We did receive um, some late uh, advice from the HRRC um, that came after the council work session. And so uh, staff worked with Future IQ uh, to take a look at those proposed edits. We did incorporate some of them, but not all of them. And we tried to note on that advisory communication how we handled each of them. And so with that, I can take any questions. Questions for System Manager Kurt? Yeah, this is comments. I, too. I, I hate to be Remember nitpicky. Stewart. I had one last edit that I think uh, it's an edit to the most recent group of changes. Um, and I, uh, having been part of the process and, and the uh, editing and, and um, work that has been done, uh, I think the team has done a fabulous job. I really appreciate taking into account uh, the suggestions that council proposed and, and have done. So thank you for getting that. Uh, my one uh, suggested change, under regional leadership, uh, section eight, uh, the paragraph headed issues, which is newly added, um, that I, I believe there are influential people no matter where you go. And uh, th there's a statement in here that says Edina is uh, da, 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 premier community and is home to many influential individuals. I think we should strike those words and is home to many influential individuals. I'll support that. Yeah, I have no objection to that. That was in there in one of the original drafts, and I, I happened to leave it in there when I was working on that section just because it had been there for some period of time, but I, I concur. I think it would, it's a better document with that out of there. So period after Twin Cities. Yes. Member Stewart. Yes, thank you. I have one little one. Member Brindle. On page five. Uh, are, are you, which copy are you looking at? Uh, the real one. The real one, okay. With all the color. <laughs> On page five under future oriented, go to the third bullet and you can take out the comma after it's. Yep. Thank you. After that, I think I think it's great. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> no one would ever hire me for proofing, so I'm glad to have Mary. <laughs> well, I think uh, from the council, and on behalf of the council, I, I would tell you that it, your leadership on this issue was really critical. This is a, a, a important piece of work, uh, next stage beyond Vision 2020, and it required a very capable person from our staff to, to lead this effort, uh, even though we had really qualified, highly qualified consultants on it. Uh, you were the, uh, what do they used to say about Reggie Jackson, you're the straw that stirred the drink, or... You know, you're the you were the glue on this whole thing, and and held it together, and gave it direction, and helped uh, David Burley and his future IQ team. Uh, you know, you're always a, a a great listener, I think, for them, and, and provided wonderful input. And and I, I see, I see your mark all over this document, and and we know that you're leaving us, and and this is something. Um, that will be wonderful to remember you by. So without talking any further about that. So. That's very kind. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the Edina, uh, Vision Edina Strategic Vision and Framework Report? So moved. Yes. As amended. Second. And a motion is second to approve the Vision Edina Strategic Vision and Framework Report. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. Next matter uh, in front of us in the reports and recommendations portion of the agenda is a proposed approval of a memorandum of, of understanding between uh, the Braemar City Lakes Figure Skating Club and the Atlanta Hockey Association. And Susie Miller, our general manager of Braemar, has this matter.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for having me here tonight. So I'm pleased to come and present the Memorandum of Understanding that the Dine Hockey Association and Braemar City Lakes Figure Skating Club worked um, together with staff to come to bring forward. So I have a very brief presentation um, that I'll go through. Just a little history and why I'm here tonight is that in August of 2013, Council um, directed us to reduce the Braemar City Lakes Figure Skating Club hours by 159 hours for the 2013 and 14 and 2015 to 2014 to 15 seasons, and then come back at the second meeting in May in 2015 to report. Whoops, <laughs> do it that quick. So just in summary. Um, what the highlights of the Memorandum of Understanding is, is that we're going to continue to schedule the facility as we have in the past two years. Um, Braemar City Lakes Figure Skating Club is going to continue to make a strong effort to release the unused time in advance. Um, they're going to continue to coexist in the facility and meet on an annual, um, annual basis to kind of review the Memorandum of Understanding and just the process and um, coexisting. They're exchanging use of the east and south arenas to maximize use of both the new shooting cage area and the backyard rink locker rooms. Um, if the club, if the Braemar City Lakes Figure Skating Club does not use all of their designated ice for a certain year, it's, um, the ice would then be available again to them in the future, so it's not a use it or lose it scenario. Um, the memorandum is for five years, so the term starts this fall, September 16th of 2015, and goes through March of 2020. That's the extent of my presentation, so I'm here for, um, to stand for any questions. Questions for Ms. Miller. Member Swenson. Yes. Hi, Ms. Miller, um, and if they, that ICE return is for a single day or a single period block of time, what about if during the course of a month or two they have certain blocks of time they don't need ICE, two or three hours, different times? Do you have an understanding of when someone has to turn back ICE and do they have to pay for that ice time if it's not then taken up by somebody else? Yes, um, under the memorandum, it's um, the intent to give back by November 1st is to benefit the Dyna Hockey Association so we can maximize their scheduling of the facility. However, if later in the season they come up and there's a three hour block that they find they do not need, if we can sell it for them, we will do our best to sell it for them. Um, they also sign on an annual basis or a semi-annual basis. They sign contracts for use of the ice. Sure. So each um, Edina Hockey Association, the figure skating club, the high school, they all sign contracts. And in that contract, it addresses that if they give us back ice with more than 30 days notice, we will we'll take it back. But if it's within 30 days, they are responsible for that if we are unable to resell it. Perfect. Thank you. Other questions for Ms. Miller? Yes. Mm -hmm. Bob. I, I just um, want to commend you and the leaders of these two organizations for coming to a mutual agreement. I know how hard it can be to mediate when there are differences of opinions on things, and uh, well done. It's, it's not easy to get to that resolution, and we appreciate you doing it. Well, thank, thank you. you. No, I'm very pleased. It was a, it, the groups are really working together. It's nice to see that happen. Yeah, wonderful. That Remember? was a nice surprise to open this and go, really? I know. <laughs> It really, I mean, they really yeah. have been working hard so to So that coexist. was very difficult Yeah. a year ago? Was it a year, year and a half ago? Two years ago, two years two ago years already? Ago. Yeah. That was very difficult. Yeah. So. And, you, you. and we've managed to get the ice time use for 60% of the ice time for hockey, the hockey programs, and we're still at 100% of the ice time for figure skating that they don't have to go out and rent Correct. someplace they did else. Not. That was part of the reason why it's going to continue as it is. One is that we added the backyard rink, which mm -hmm. is very, very nice for the, for the hockey association. Um, and then also the figure skating club did not need to go out and purchase additional time. They restructured the ice that we gave them to maximize their use. And then they, um, and in fact, last year they, were, they gave back an additional 35 hours. Okay, thank you. Good. Is there a motion on this matter? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second to, uh, um, actually, we don't need any action. We just had a report out, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you for that report. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, no vote needed. No vote needed. It's but we'll give you a resolution accepting yeah, we'll. various grants and donations. I'll move acceptance. All right. I'll second that. <laughs>
Yeah. We're in the motion rhythm. Yeah. There, we there you are. go. Thank you. All right, we got a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2015 45. Uh, uh, any further questions? Comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. Uh, this month, uh, this reporting period actually, the past two weeks, we got a donation to, uh, to the Edina Arts Center from a variety of individuals um, with a variety of donations, and you'll see their names on the website. All right, and then the final item in this portion of the agenda under reports and recommendations is the uh, resolution 2015-51, providing for the sale of bonds series 2015-A and 2015-B. Director Rogerman has this matter. Yes, thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. We actually have uh, three bond issues in front of the City Council tonight. Two are from the City and one is for the HRA. I'll address all three right now in the interest of efficiency. Uh, so the first issue, it's 14,940,000 of uh, Series 2015A bonds. It has uh, a couple different purposes. Uh, primarily it's for the street <coughs> reconstruction program to finance the 2015 improvements to local streets. So for those projects, the, the street portion of the improvement will be assessed to the benefiting property owners, and the utility portion of those improvements uh, will be repaid with water and sewer uh, charges. Uh, also with that issue, there's 2,590,000 for parking improvements at 50th and France. Uh, that, part of the, that part of the bond proceeds will be assessed out in a similar fashion to the street, street improvement uh, assessments. The second issue tonight is for 2,185,000 of improvements to Braemar Golf Course. I'd like to thank uh, Council Member Brindle who pointed out there's a typo in my staff report. At one point it says 2,205,000 uh, right in the middle of the staff report. That number is incorrect. In the action requested sentence on top, it does say 2,185,000 and the resolution number is correct as well. But. Um, so the 2185000 in uh, Braemar Golf Course improvements includes reconstruction of the driving range, uh, the par 3 course uh, renovations, and also some improvements to the clubhouse at Braemar, uh, mostly exterior renovations for roofing and siding, and also a couple other things uh, out at Braemar Golf Course. And then finally, the third issue tonight is 3,655,000 uh, for the HRA public project revenue refunding bonds. This is a refunding issue of uh, already existing debt um, that the, um, we've identified some possible cost savings based on lower interest rates today than, than what is on the existing debt. So uh, with that, I'll stand for any questions. We also have Mark, Mark Ruff from Ellers uh, Financial Advisors here tonight if you have any questions for him. Questions for Director Rogerman on this matter? Right. Or Mr. Ruff, Member Brindle? Um, just, oh, it's on, okay. Looking at the HRA, mm -hmm. one, if I can jump to that since we're working on both of them at the same time, um, the cost savings that we are talking about here, tell me if I'm looking at the right number mm -hmm. um, in the text. 265,000 or 6.5% of the refunded debt, is that the cost savings that we're gonna realize? Or am I looking at the wrong number? No, that sounds correct to me, 200 and... Uh, 256. Two, two, 256, 799 and 82 cents is the calculated savings. Okay. Yep. All right, thank you. All right, um, is there anyone who wishes to move resolution 2015-51 which covers uh, the general obligation bonds in the amount of $14,940,000. That's in uh, Series 215A, and then $2,185,000 in general obligation bonds embodied in Series 2015-B, uh, the, um, the latter for, uh, I think, um, golf. golf course improvements. So um, is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2015-51. Uh, any further questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Could. Carried. 
Mark Ruff come up and I'd like to just ask him a little bit about the current bond climate and what he foresees for the future in the near future. Certainly. I want you to predict what the Fed is going to do. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm Mark Ruff with Ellers, the city's financial advisor. Um, member Swenson oftentimes asks me very difficult questions <laughs> and this is no different. Uh, we have seen a uh, Interest rates uh, through the beginning of 2015 were very low. Uh, we saw over 2014 actually a decline in interest rates. Just within the last two weeks, we have seen an uptick of interest rates about, you know, in our world, it's a lot, it's 20 basis points. In most people's world, it's not that much, it's less than a quarter of a percent. Um, but there is, a, you know, this, there is still, we are hanging in the balance of probably, um, not a lot of certainty that our economy is gathering enough steam that we're mm -hmm. going to see inflation and rapid rises in interest rates. Uh, so in the next month, I don't foresee any major changes uh, in interest rates, but I've been wrong before. Uh, I would also say that demand mm -hmm. continues to be high for very high quality bond issues and the city of Edina having two AAA ratings, one from Standard & Poor's and one from Moody, certainly qualifies within that high demand. Uh, so generally, I, I am optimistic about the results of these sales. Uh, if for some reason rates happen to spike and we saw that the refunding that was mentioned did not meet and generally savings parameters, there's no hurry in doing that bond issue, we may come back to you with a recommendation that because it's a refund and you could, do, you could defer that. But generally, um, our advice is, is if your goals are met for affordability and rates, then you ought to act now rather than trying to play the market or make predictions because I personally have never had very much luck with that, but maybe some of you have a better sense of the future than I do. As a daughter of the stockbroker, I'm probably different, but no, I was more concerned with the one that we were doing to save some money, you know, and hoping that the rate would do that. And as long as, if things aren't working out that way, we can choose not to do that, then I think that's great. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ruff. All right, uh, moving on to the uh, correspondence and petitions portion of the agenda. Is there anything uh, that the council hasn't seen or wasn't put on the dais this evening? Or in our prior to that in our packets, thank you. Um, Aviation noise update, Member Swenson and Manager Neal. Uh, we do have a uh, knock and airport noise meeting Wednesday at 1.30 at the MAC offices. Uh, so it's this Wednesday. Also next Wednesday night, the 27th at 7 p.m., I will be down in Morningside for an annual Morningside meeting that I think also the Concord neighborhood has been invited to where we will have Lauren Olson, um, representing Minneapolis, and John Quigley, and I'll be there, and um, Fair Skies will be there. Quincy. Um, and we'll just talk about airport noise and kind of give an update. Um, I'll bring the figures for April along with me. Um, our technology department has very nicely pulled them out for me and is printing them now. And, um, but April was a, um, actually a pretty loud month and it was very interesting. I did discover something as you sit and listen to airplanes. There is something called Flight Tracker and it has a delay I think of 10 minutes, whatever it is they tell you. So you can literally see when you look at the clock in your house and see, gosh, that plane was really loud. Then you can watch on the delay, the 10 minute delay, what plane that was. They'll tell you what type of airplane it was think even the carrier that ha was flying it. Um, so you can see what it is that is the loudest over your house. So that was very interesting. Do you have anything? I do, um, Your Honor and members of council. Uh, last week, uh, a couple members of, of staff and I met with uh, some of our colleagues from the Minneapolis, from the, from the Metropolitan Airports Commission uh, from the staff to give a, uh, a preview of the 2035 long-term comprehensive plan that they have been working on for a couple of years now. And it, it involves uh, some, some fundamental assumptions about what they believe air travel will be like in the next uh, 20 years, including kinds of aircraft, uh, capacities of aircraft, 
direction aircraft are, are going to be um, going, uh, departures, uh, arrivals, et cetera, et cetera. And they use all of that to, to try to get a sense of how large the, the airport uh, terminal needs to be, how many gates they need to have, uh, do they have the right ar array uh, and placement of runways, et cetera. Um, it's very interesting information. And uh, what they're doing right now on a staff standpoint is, is interacting with the various cities that uh, are directly impacted uh, by MAC operations. Um, we're giving them some initial feedback. They, do, they did ask us if, if we would be interested in having them come back and do the presentation for policymakers, and we said that we were. So we're going to be uh, working with them to find a place in your council uh, schedule for sometime this summer uh, where they can come and, and uh, probably Dana Nelson or Chad Leckby uh, from the department uh, will come and, and give a presentation, most likely I think at a council meeting um, where they can be filmed and where we can uh, broadcast and, and so forth and you can answer, they can, uh, they can answer your questions. But it's a very interesting uh, presentation on their part. I did forget one thing. Um, we belong to NOISE, which is a national association, and um, they just announced on the 7th that the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, that it will start a multi-year process to study the impacts of aviation noise exposure on communities near airports, which I know there's been multiple groups pushing towards, and we supported this initiative when we were out in Washington this winter. Um, so it's going to be a next two or three month community surrounding 20 specific but yet at this point unnamed airports. It would be great if one of them was ours. Um, and they'll be surveyed via mail and telephone. So I'm actually hoping we'll find out um, that it is ours during the process. Um, that would be great if we could get some more direct feedback. But they are looking for feedback similar to um, Arizona, where they just started our NAV, and they're having so many complaints. Um, the other thing, if you read the paper in the last couple days with Sun Country's um, issue with their pilots, and they are flying not under contract, and there is a potential that Sun Country will shut down their operation um, sometime this summer. Um, the MAC did say that, that if that does happen, it will slow down their expansion plans, but it would be nice to hear in advance what their expansion plans are. Okay. That's all I have. Um, <laughs> Member Swenson, you want to lead off with council comments? Sure. Um, oh, and the hosp our hospital, the emergency room should be opening up. I don't have a date on it. Do you? It said sometime late summer, <laughs> fall. Yeah. August. They have a great YouTube um, video on it now that I got sent. Um, but I want we we did proclamations tonight, but we really missed one. And so the mayor and the city council, we have an additional proclamation that on May 19th is Karen Kurt night. Whereas Karen has taught us to be organized in our workplace, whereas Karen has been an example of calm leadership, whereas Karen has successfully led our vision process whereas Karen has led the creation of neighborhood associations and encouraged community engagement, whereas Karen Kurt has been instrumental in completing the small area plan for Valley View and Wooddale. You're going to make me cry. Now, don't do that. Whereas Karen has been proud of the city, its employees, and its residents that she serves, and we will all miss her a lot. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we thank Karen for her service and wish her the best as the new city manager of Platteville, even though the city is in Wisconsin. We love you. And you made him promise to do nothing, but yep. you didn't make me promise. <laughs> so we've got a joint motion and a joint second. All those in favor of the proclamation as read by Member Swenson say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Gary. And I'd like to give you a handwritten copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Member Swenson. Anything else? No. All right. Not after that. Member Brindle. Oh, I have to follow that. Okay. Uh, I have a couple things. Um, the Veterans Memorial at Utley Park will be dedicated on Memorial Day, May 25th. 
The morning will begin with uh, fifes and drums at about nine o'clock, and the then following that, actually, probably not. Anyway, the first John Philip Sousa Memorial Band will play at 9.30, play about a half hour, up to the time that the dedication ceremony begins, and uh, it should be a wonderful celebration uh, of a project that uh, I think in, in all of its circling and, and, and all the people involved, uh, the committee that was assembled uh, with Richard Olson and Peter Crane and John Curry and Dick Crockett, and I'm not gonna name them all because I will forget too many of them, but uh, a huge thanks and <coughs> a, a debt of gratitude to them and uh, Tom Shirley as staff liaison <coughs> and they've reached out into the community for participants who are gonna make this a wonderful event. So thank you, and thank you obviously to all the veterans that make this an honor for us to be able to provide in, in their recognition. Um, let's see here, a uh, couple things going on. We have graduates. It is the end of the school year. Um, I had some horn lessons yesterday and realized that for three of my students, it's the last I will see of them because they are graduating. So I'm sending them off with congratulations, but just wishing all the uh, Edina High School graduates uh, a safe, happy, and joyous uh, graduation celebration and a great party, whatever it is. And uh, then a couple things going on in the community. Uh, you hear me talk about the, 490, uh, the I-494 Commission. And one aspect of that is commuter services. Commuter services is a trans transportation management office. And its purpose is to reduce the number of cars on 494. So I have a couple of posters that I'm gonna leave here free bike to work week celebrations the week of uh, June 17th. So at Arneson Acres Park in Edina and REI in Bloomington, there are some activities around bike to work week. And there's also find a new way uh, of getting places. And um, if you're looking at biking somewhere and you're not sure of the right route, uh, you can go to Google Maps and one of the icons available to you is a bicycle. So you can click that and it'll give you a route that is a low traffic route uh, and a safer route with bike routes or bike lanes between where you are and your destination. So uh, there's also Cyclopath, which is an app. Uh, so those are two resources. But if you're stuck between a rock and a hard place and you can't remember, then you can call Commuter Services and they're happy to share these resources with you. Uh, and you can go to 494corridor.org for some more details about that. Um, let's see. In keeping with people who have done wonderful things uh, at Edina City Hall and have now um, moved to other places. Uh, we all, I think, got a thank you card from Lindy Crawford. I had to look at the signature for a little while to figure it out, but I did figure it out, I believe. Uh, and so we wish her well. She is the city administrator for Tonka Bay. So what a thrill to have a city manager fellow uh, be working with us. Was she here two years? One year. One year, mm -hmm. and uh, be stepping off into the real world with a city of her own mm -hmm. to administer. So, so that's terrific. Um, let's see here. And my last one is, uh, the mayor just reminded me on Thursday of this week, Southwest Corridor Light Rail, a committee that I just am so proud to be part of as the mayor's alternate, and I get to serve as his alternate this week. Uh, but this is a community works committee. It is the committee that looks at station area planning, mm -hmm. getting people to a station, getting people from a station, and what should that station be composed of that reflects 
that area. And this, this week, on uh, Thursday, we're going to hear from the FTA New Starts. The, the, we're going to hear about the New Starts application that it will be submitted to the Federal Transportation Administration. Uh, it's always exciting when you can actually complete something and send it to them. So that is on its way after this presentation this week. And then we're going to talk with St. Louis Park City Council members about uh, station area planning in their city and uh, what they're doing to, uh, to get ready for light rail in St. Louis Park. So that's what's on my docket. Thank you. Member Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A um, couple things over the past few weeks. Um, I attended the Minnesota Business Ethics Award, and I would like to uh, encourage Edina businesses and perhaps the Edina Chamber of Commerce to consider uh, applying themselves for this annual award. Um, it's, uh, it's a great uh, recognition. It, it is not easy to be uh, uh, vetted and chosen as the recipient of the award, but um, I think uh, here in Minnesota we can be proud that we have many uh, businesses that have really the highest ethical standards, and, uh, and I think it's a great thing to trumpet that. So uh, I encourage you to look at that. Um, this past weekend, the Concord neighborhood had a garage sale. Uh, a lot of uh, interesting things there, but I'd like to see the neighborhoods get together like that and uh, encourage other neighborhoods to think about similar uh, shared activities for the neighborhood. Um, also, uh, this past Friday, May 15th, I attended the annual uh, local scholarship breakfast uh, for Edina High School. Uh, it's very impressive to see the number of young uh, people, as uh, Member Brindle mentioned, uh, the soon-to-graduate students who uh, just a remarkable group of people and uh, a remarkable amount of support from the community uh, in recognizing the achievements of those young people and sending them off with a little bit of cash to help defray the very large costs of college. Um, the... Uh, uh, also, on that same theme, the Edina Ed Fund this past weekend, uh, actually Sunday and Monday, had their annual golf and tennis event. And if you didn't get a chance to support the Edina Ed Fund in that, I would encourage you to check out the Edina Education Fund and uh, support, again, our, uh, our great school system here. Um, <clears throat> and finally, uh, I made it to Tin Fish before the grand opening. I was not able to get to the grand opening yesterday, but... Uh, delighted to have uh, Tin Fish operating out of the Bramar Clubhouse. And, uh, and also uh, note that the graduation party season has begun. Uh, Mayor Brindle, the graduation ceremony itself will be on Sunday, May 31st at uh, Mariucci Arena for Edina High School. Uh, it's at the exact same time for Minnehaha Academy where my, uh, my son attends. I have twins who are seniors in high school, so... Uh, I have to replicate myself to be at both graduations. Um, in the future here, uh, there is a Neighborhood Association workshop tomorrow at 6 p.m. located in, where is that? In the community room here at City Hall. Um, uh, this weekend on Saturday the 23rd, uh, there is a uh, bicycle ride that Paul Thompson was mentioning and I've lost the location so uh, Saturday morning uh, if you need information on that you can contact me and I'll get it to you and then on Memorial Day uh, at beginning the formal ceremony I guess begins at 930 at Utley Park for the dedication of the Veterans Memorial right thank you all right thank you member Stewart member Stoughton uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple of items. Uh, one, I wanted to mention that uh, we had a second meeting of our climate commitment team uh, yesterday morning here at City Hall. That is three members of the Energy Environment Commission and the city manager and myself. And uh, we are working to um, come up with strategies to live up to the commitments to um, uh, greenhouse gas reduction that the city has made over the last several years and I'm happy to report that we're moving along and we'll have some substantive summaries for you in future meetings. Um, I also wanted to mention a delightful event I went to on 
the 9th of May over in the Country Club neighborhood, they had the first historic uh, Country Club tour. And it was put together by a group of folks who live in the neighborhood. And it was a tremendous event. About 70 people showed up. They were uh, apparently uh, effective enough to order one of the nicest days of the spring, blue skies, 70 degrees, completely dry. And they had separate groups that each were led by a docent who would take you around to five or six different historic uh, houses in the Country Club neighborhood and give you some of the history and some architectural background. And, And I think what they're trying to do is raise awareness about the tremendous historic and heritage resources we have in that district and I thought it was a terrific uh, a terrific event and I want to just really commend them on their work and and I look forward to attending the second annual uh, event. The, uh, the one other item I wanted to mention that happened last week, uh, the Dinah Community Foundation had a nice fundraiser. I was not able to attend because I was out of town but I heard that it was a great success and of course that organization does a lot of great things in our community and it's great to see that people are so generous with uh, donations to the community foundation that can help us continue to do those things. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I just saw a report today on the fundraiser. There were about 80 folks that showed up for that fundraiser and it was uh, very, very successful. Um, My calendar the last couple of weeks, uh, on May 6th, uh, I participated in a special Southwest LRT uh, quarter management committee meeting where we talked about the $341 million problem and, uh, and how we were going to start to deal with it and some of the criteria that we'd look at uh, in, uh, in, in viewing how to solve that particular monetary problem. Tomorrow, we're going to have a follow-up meeting of the Quarter Management Committee uh, team where we're going to actually get some suggestions from, uh, from the Special Projects Office about some things that we could do uh, to both maintain our rating with the Federal Transit Authority and also start to look at some uh, significant cuts in, uh, in, in, the, in the costing of it. And, of course, one thing you have to think about is, is deferring some of the work that needs to be done, just like they did on Hiawatha years ago. Uh, there are stations that came into Bloomington uh, in the South Loop, for example, that were 10 years late. So I think we're going to have to start thinking, especially in Eden Prairie at the end of the line, about deferring some of that those station stops, and I expect that'll be part of the conversation tomorrow. If we could defer uh, at least one stop, uh, not go to Mitchell Road, and maybe not go to Southwest uh, Transit Hub, we're over 200 million in savings right there, and end at Town Center. So I, I'm sure that isn't good news to the folks in Eden Prairie, but I know that they're good team players, and the overall benefits of this line and wanting to make it work are extraordinarily important. So I expect every community along the line to work hard at this. Um, on May 8th, I was privileged to help Member Swenson attend the ribbon cutting for Milkweed Month over at Jerry's Grocery Store. And of course, the theme is No Milkweed, No Monarchs. Right. And, uh, and um, it was a great group of people that, that were there that morning, led by Member Swenson. Uh, and then uh, I also caught up uh, with Member Staunton late at the Historic Country Club walking tour because I made the mistake of looking at my handheld and saw walking. Uh, and didn't read carefully and thought, oh, this must be the day I go walking with the mayor. So I go over to Bredesen Park, uh, and I'm there by myself. Uh, and I, my wife was with me, so we walked around the whole park. And then I ran into a guy. He said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm doing a walk with the mayor. He said, well, you're not on the third Saturday. I mean, he, this guy knew that <laughs> yeah, it was the third Saturday. <laughs> Duh. So then I looked at my calendar and realized I should have been on the walking tour in the country club. So I, Went over and joined Member Staunton, and it was a great morning for a tour over there, and those docents did a wonderful job. On the 13th, I went downtown. Um, uh, the greater the St. Paul and Minneapolis Chambers brought in a guy named Dr. Anthony Iton, who is the senior VP for health, uh, community, Healthy Communities at the California Endowment. He's a, a lawyer, a physician, uh, born and raised in Montreal, went to Johns Hopkins, um, and he spoke about the issue of does your zip code determine your health? And uh, it was a fascinating, uh, fascinating conversation by a guy who was extraordinarily bright and, and uh, articulate and, and engaging. People really enjoyed the conversation. We have access, I think, to his PowerPoint presentation, and I'll try to get access for the council uh, to that document. 
Um, the Veterans Memorial uh, Committee, I went through the final walkthrough with them on the 15th, and of course, Member Brindles talked about uh, the Veterans Memorial dedication. 10 o'clock on the 25th, it's going to be a fabulous event. I uh, hope you all can join us down there on Memorial Day. Uh, so we did have a walk with the mayor this past Saturday and uh, had a few folks show up. But I think in the summertime, we need, we need to consider doing it on a weekday night because a lot of people have plans on the weekends. And uh, maybe a Thursday night would be good to think about uh, at least part of the summer. And then Member Stewart emailed me about the robotics tournament, and I had several meetings with uh, residents and didn't make it over to the robotics tournament. I don't know if you did or not, but uh, I think they did pretty well. I ran into, uh, uh, at the Ed Fund fundraiser Sunday night, I ran into um, uh, uh, Peter Ottenes' parents, and they said that uh, they had done really well over there. They're coming, uh, Mayor, on June 2nd to do their presentation. Okay, good, good. Um, and then on the 29th, I've got two more things. Thanks for your patience. Two, on the 29th of May, some of you may want to put this on your calendar, down at the Hyatt Regency in Minneapolis, 7.30 to 9.30 in the morning. Uh, we're going we're gonna to tell the region about these, this regional indicators dashboard that many of us have been working on at Greater MSP. And this is uh, what has been developed as a set of shared objective metrics uh, that will track the region's overall success in a variety of categories in terms of um, economic development, uh, our environmental and social outcomes. And we hope that it'll help, <coughs> those metrics will help us kind of keep track of our progress and help us build a pathway towards a better future. So I would encourage those of you that are interested to come down on the 29th. I happen to be on one of the panels, maybe the only panel, but uh, I'll find out more about that this week. And then one other final thing. Um, I think all of you have seen this letter that came from the Department of Administration. Uh, one of our residents um, uh, filed a report with the Department of Administration at the state. Um, it was basically a complaint about how we had uh, handled the review of our city manager. And, and of course, uh, under state law, we've got to be very sensitive to uh, privacy issues. And we go into closed session when we do this. There were three issues that were involved. One was we had two meetings, and uh, one didn't get tape recorded just because of human error. Uh, that seemed to be uh, understandable. And then uh, we got a little bit of criticism from, criticism from the Department of Administration for uh, adjourning from one meeting to the next instead of recessing from one meeting to the next. So it was a bit of a procedural hiccup. Um, and then the other part of it was that uh, that we were criticized, I think, by our resident uh, about how we handled the review of our city manager when we when we when we brought that review public. And, and Member Stewart, I remember you asked, is that is that at an adequate re uh, representation of, of the type of activity that we had, or is that an adequate review? I guess is uh, of why we decided to extend the contract offer to extend Manager Neal's employment. So. Uh, in the quest to be uh, mindful of his privacy and with the advice of our city attorney, uh, the statement that I read was designed to comport with state law with respect to those two issues. Uh, an adequate amount of transparency and disclosure on the part of the council as to why we determined to extend an offer of extended employment to uh, Manager Neal, but at the same time being sensitive to the privacy issues that were involved in that review. So I don't know, Roger, if you have any additional comments that you'd like to make as our city attorney. Uh, you guided us through that process, and I thought, well, and um, I'm, I think we're all sensitive to the idea that we were subjected to, uh, um, I guess, a, a letter from the Department of Administration that was a little bit critical on how much we disclosed about why we wanted to hire him uh, for an extended period of time. The statute says you have to summarize your conclusions. It doesn't say how many words you have to use. IPAD, Department of Administration, has su suggests they want you to use more words than you used. I don't think the statute, I know the statute doesn't say that. It says you have to summarize your conclusions and I think that's exactly what you did. You can go on and say more, but that's your decision. All right. So I, I think this entire council wanted to make sure that our Residents knew that we had received this correspondence um, in response to a concern one of our residents had. And uh, those are the three issues that were involved, the failure to tape record, which is human error, the adjournment versus recess issue, and then the, uh, 
the notion that we should have disclosed a little bit more information about why we thought it was important to extend an offer of uh, continued employment to manager Neal. So I think that's, I'm glad that we were able to talk about that this evening and, and get that out into the air. Uh, Member Swenson, did you no. have a comment? Uh, okay, I'll good. Take. All right. Um, Manager Neal. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, a couple of things. I'm gonna pass something out to you. Um, the west side of the France Avenue, Southdale area planning group uh, is wanting to have a, a series of meetings with involving city council members, planning commission members, and work group members. And they are trying to uh, put together this group of important people with very uh, busy schedules. And so they've established some dates and times uh, that they want to try to um, have these meetings. Um, you are, uh, are important to have in this group. So I wanted to provide this to you tonight and to let you know that uh, I've asked, I'm asking Heather Brannigan to contact you to uh, try to plug you into this schedule. So you don't have to decide this tonight. I want to give it to you so you have a chance to vet it with your personal and, and uh, professional calendars. But she'll be calling you and asking you which slot do you want or which date do you want, and that's where we want to try to fit you into this process. So they have a work plan that has a schedule of what they're doing when. Does this fall within their current work plan or does this change their I'm, current work I'm plan? I'm gonna ask uh, Mr. Teague to answer that question, Carrie. They are a little bit behind schedule. And will this put them more behind schedule? Because part of this goal was that it was gonna have a certain timeline to it and it was gonna be completed, I thought. 60 days, I thought. 60 days, which was sometime early June, if I'm not mistaken. And this, this, these meetings go through June 1st, and then I don't know what happens after that. So I just would like to know. Ideally, if we could get these meetings by June 1st, we would then take, um, bring their work forward to the Planning Commission on June 10th, and then potentially to the City Council on June 16th. Wow. Okay. It's ambitious, but that, that's our goal. Well, I think that, it, our, that we have to be done by mid-June because that's already probably almost two weeks past what we promised we, would go, we were going to do this process in. Right. And um, so if we can't complete these meetings in the requisite timeline and we start putting that final meeting into July, I'm not very comfortable with that. I don't know how the rest of my council feels, but. Mr. Mayor, I, I think in fairness to the committee, I think they were under the impression that we'd, they would be able to schedule a work session with the council. And um, our work sessions are very, very booked and, and tough to schedule. And so when that didn't happen, I think what they did is tried to re-rig. I think they want to communicate mm -hmm. in a more informal way about how things are going and where they envision they're going. And so I want to be supportive of that. I think this group has done a lot of great work, and I don't think they're trying to uh, uh, extend this any oh, longer I than they need to. I wasn't accusing them of trying to extend it. I just know we made a promise to the residents in that yep. area and every time, and to the landowners in that area, right. and every time we extend things like this, it has impacts. Right. And we lose some trust, actually. So they're at a critical juncture in, in the formation of the principles, and uh, the, they believe that this meeting structure that they're trying to put together is, is very important to get your feedback in that okay. kind of structure. And do these meetings have a timeline as to, they have a time they want to start, but I don't. They do, so and, and one, no longer than one, one hour. hour. Okay. So I'm, I just, to chime in, I wanna, I, I wanna just communicate that I'm very supportive of the work they're doing, and I want, I think we ought to all work to try and get on a calendar and, and do this as quickly as we can. I echo um, Council Member Swenson's sense of urgency. I think that's really important to everybody who's involved here. And I, you know, I haven't talked with everybody on the committee, but the couple of people I have talked to, they sound like they're working very hard to try to mm -hmm. um, bring this stage to a conclusion. And anything we can do to help and keep it moving along is something I'm supportive of. Agreed. 
I have a question yeah, regarding ahead. this. Um, under meeting orchestration, it says no more than two council members and no more than two planning commissioners. Right. Are planning commissioners subject to the mm -hmm. open meeting law? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, then is there number two or three? It's it's, it's the it's four. Right, because of their larger. Because group they're size. larger. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Thanks. Yep. Uh, let me ask my colleagues this question, and it's come about because of our work at Grandview, where we've been required because of schedules to have some of these one-off or two-off meetings with with uh, uh, the development team and our own staff. To me, those haven't been pro as productive as like the meeting we had tonight where we were all together and we all got to listen to something from a presentation standpoint. And, and it really benefited me and I think everybody else to listen to what everybody else was thinking about uh, in the context of a council work session. So I'd almost be inclined to say, yeah, we'll meet with you, but one off isn't the best way to do it. Can't we have a special work session? Couldn't we? Couldn't we try to find a special date in here somewhere where we could notice yeah, that? Up? Notice yeah, of course there is, but it's not many days. You can do that. I don't think, oh, Jane. Yeah, it's th it's, it's three days. Yeah. So, on three days' notice, we could have a special work session. Um, it's tough. We've we have not found your calendars to sync up very well for special work sessions but I, I do agree they might they in fact uh, they were interested in doing that as well this is it was their second choice in in trying to have trying to get your input uh, trying to get your input as quickly as they could into I got one time on this whole sheet that I can comply with this mm -hmm. one day okay when is it five o'clock Wednesday the 27th which I have to be out of there by 630 because I have the morning side meeting then that okay. night but that's it and I have to come straight from work to do that that works for me well I can make that work I can make that work <laughs> on, on t the which date again the Wednesday May 27th, May 27th at 5 o'clock what do you think Carrie if I might, that might work really well because the planning our, commission is that night. It is that night, and we don't have any items on the agenda. We were going to cancel and have a work session with Roger, but we could do that another time, and and yeah, have, have the work for the session mayor. for this. Um, well, this this is interesting. I got a meeting scheduled at five o'clock on the twenty seventh with uh, Michael Schroeder. <laughs> That's a lot of people. He's going to be at that meeting. So, you know, maybe we could move that meeting to 4 o'clock if it would work. Uh, and then I've got another meeting at 7 that night. Yeah, I've got a meeting at 7. That. So we could, so you could do the 5 o'clock. I could, if I can get those folks well, to change, there's three other people involved other than Schroeder. Well, I don't know how they were going to, well, I guess they were just going to do parts of the work group because he's the chair, he's the, one of the co-chairs of the work group that we're meeting with. And how come uh, six six o'clock on the twenty seventh wasn't an option? Five is better. Yeah. Five so they've, they've also got uh, seven thirty a.m. on the twenty seventh. But and, and Michael needs to be at this. If we did a meeting with them, Michael would be at that meeting. Yes. You could just shift your meeting to yeah, Michael, having yeah. a meeting with Michael. Michael. Can't be at well, maybe they weren't planning on the whole task force being at all the meetings. That's right, they weren't. Well, let, let me see what I can do. Okay. We need, we'll need to know soon because so, it, give so we can notice it out. Right. Yeah, uh, I'll, have to, we'll, I'll have to work on this tomorrow. Okay. If I can get, if I can get them all to back up an hour, we're okay. Okay. Uh, two more things. Uh, we have... Uh, we're approaching the uh, the end of the first year of existence of Explora Dina, the our mm -hmm. convention visitors bureau, and I've asked them to come in and do a presentation for the council on the activities and events of their first year and how they're doing financially and how they're positioned for the future. So that's going to occur on July 21st. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we had a, a discussion. I think we needed to talk about the council tonight about. Uh, the June 16th meeting about oh, thank you do you want to sure okay um, so as as part of this um, uh, 
um, Riley Symposium in Charleston, South Carolina. That's on the 15th and 16th of June that we've been invited to attend. Uh, Manager Neal, me, potentially Mayor Pro Tem Swenson. Um, and so we wouldn't get back in time for the regular council meeting, so there was some thought given to whether the council would entertain meeting on Wednesday the 17th. If That's that would fine. work for people. Normally I don't like Wednesdays, but that Wednesday works for me. That works for me. Yep. I can, I, you guys can make it work. I can make it work. Okay. Well, right. Look at how easy that one was. <laughs> I will, that will, uh, easy. We'll make it work. We will make that schedule change. And that's all I have. Now you owe us on the 27th. Right, so very good. Mayor? That caused anything else uh, to come into uh, any council members' mind? Mayor? About what they Mayor? Want to Mayor? Say? Mayor? Over here. Karen? <laughs> Sorry. Now We're that the tears have abated, I just wanted to more formally thank everybody. Um, you know, for me in this role, it was both a new city and a new job and a new, a new role. And I couldn't have found a more welcoming and patient council to work with, both current and past. And the community members have also been just fabulous. And it's really been my experience here that's prepared me to go on to potentially be a city manager myself. So I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, you'll do a fabulous job, and we're really going to miss you here. So yeah. thank and, you. And if for I could make just one request, could I get a photo with my proclamation? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly can. And, and you, would you mind waiting until we finish the HRA work? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. We oh, got we one could little, be fast with wait, the yeah. HRA. All right. All right. Uh, anything further from the council? Okay. All right. We stand adjourned. Calling to order the uh, HRA. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Grendel. Here. Commissioner Stoughton. Here. Commissioner Stewart. Here. Here. Commissioner Stewart. Nope. <laughs> 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 I'm going to make them all. <laughs> <laughs> Got into the S's. <laughs> Here. Um, we've got a form of meeting agenda in front of us for the HRA. Is there a motion to approve so the moved. meeting agenda? So moved. Got a motion second. second to approve the meeting agenda. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. Approval of the minutes of the HRA, May 6, 2015. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. 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 All right. We've got a motion and a second to approve the HRA oh, minutes from May 6, 2015. <laughs> Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. And then finally, we have uh, a resolution on the... Uh, Providing for the sale of the bonds, that's the series 2015 bonds that is embodied in resolution 2015-02. So moved. Second. We've got a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2015-02, providing for the sale of 3,655,000 in public project revenue or funding bonds. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. And I'm, I think we're all eager to see how close we come to the projection on the savings. That you brought up. Yep. Member Brindle. All right. Uh, HRA is adjourned. And photo. Time for the photo with the proclamation. The. Uh